counsel. Um, I, I'm not quite sure I understood um, the answer you gave earlier about whether or not you've previously used uh, uh, C2 uh, in, in this type of case. Ha have you done that before or not? We have charged C2 in situations that don't involve evidence impairment, and the litigating position of the department has long been that, as its plain language suggests, it covers myriad ways of obstructing. I'm not aware of any other factual circumstance or event out in the world where we could have proved all of the elements of Section 1512 C2 beyond the cases where we've brought those prosecutions. So, yeah, and Just so I understand, the prosecutions are limited in what way? They're limited to a requirement that the specific people had in mind an official proceeding, so that would take out the category of hypotheticals where, you know, maybe right. you're protesting a branch of government, you're outside this court, but you don't have this specific argument in mind. And then we would also need to show an intent to obstruct the proceeding and the nexus to the proceeding, and that can take care of, you know, situations where maybe someone's and pulling you've, a you've fire alarm that. in a different building, but no, it's not even where me. the proceeding happens. In prior cases, you have applied C2 in a situation, what, not involving specific documents? Correct. So things like tipping off someone to the existence of a grand jury investigation or the identity of an undercover officer or creating a fake court order that has nothing to do with the evidence in the case but is just prompting the litigant to dismiss a pending mandamus petition. And, and your, friend's, uh, po your friend points to a, an Office of Legal Counsel opinion um, uh, from 2019 that uh, I haven't looked at it yet, but I will. It says it is uh, consistent with Judge Katz's uh, opinion below. So that, that um, advice that was offered to the Attorney General and never adopted as a formal position of the Department of Justice related to distinct issues that arose out of the special counsel investigation and distinct issues that involved the office of the presidency, I don't think that it would be right to suggest that the memo took any firm stand, although it did suggest that maybe 1512C2 should be understood more narrowly, but it, didn't, it certainly didn't represent any formal adoption of that position, and that would have been inconsistent with how the government has always litigated under C2. What constitutes a formal formal uh, acceptance of OLC opin uh, opinions? I should probably know the answer to that one uh, as a yeah, matter of, too, of DOJ <laughs> policy. But uh, what, what I can tell you is the reason I'm saying that wasn't an official position is because it specifically said there's no need to go down the road of even deciding exactly what 1512C2 covers, because even in, uh, assuming that it covers the full range of obstructive conduct, the allegations, according to the memo, didn't satisfy the standard there. So it ultimately just punted on the issue and said it's not necessary to engage with that issue further. Thank you. 